Does lifting make women look bulky? Should you do it if you want to lose belly fat? We're going to go over those answers today and how to build your dream body. If you want to learn how to sustainably lose fat, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Vivian. I'm a fat loss coach and all of my female clients lift, whether it's at home with bands and dumbbells or in a gym full of barbells. And we're going to talk about why lifting is so great, especially for women. The first reason why lifting is so great is because it helps with your metabolism and your health. So you might have heard of fat burners, which are these pills that you can take, and they don't really help with your metabolism. But the way to actually do that naturally is by building muscle because muscle, that tissue, burns more calories at rest than does fat or bones or any other tissue in your body. So metabolically, you are burning more calories overall just because you have more muscle on you. And that is something that you can affect. If you lift over time, you're going to build muscle. So then you're going to increase your metabolic rate. I've gotten the question of, if I just want to lose belly fat, should I work out my arms and legs or should I just keep doing crunches? And the answer is, work out everything. Your metabolism isn't localized to different parts of your body. So if you have 5 or 20 pounds of muscle on you, no matter where it is, your body's entire metabolic rate is up. Your metabolism is faster because of it. And it's a lot easier to build muscle over your entire body rather than try to get like 20 pounds of muscles in just your abs. Not that that's possible, I don't think. You can't spot reduce fat. So when you lose fat, you lose it from all over your body. And the way that it's distributed is based off of your genetics. But that doesn't mean you can't ever lose belly fat. Just understand that to lose fat, that requires a caloric deficit and maybe some cardio. Not extreme amounts because that can backfire, but just some cardio can be used as a tool. And resistance training helps build muscle, so in a shape, and builds your metabolism. Muscle makes it easier to lose fat overall, and in just a bit, we're going to talk about how having more muscle on you actually makes it easier so that you look better, even if you're not super lean. Lifting also makes you more physically functional in life, so you can handle whatever it throws at you. I've never been surfing before, so my first time I took a surf lesson, and the instructor said, to get from laying to standing on the surfboard, you essentially do a burpee. So she's like, come on girl, like give me all you got. You gotta push, you gotta get out fast. And I was like, oh man, like I do squats and I quite enjoy burpees. Like this push up position is very comfortable for me because I lift and not to brag, but I did really well for my first time. And I did better than the other students who have taken a couple of lessons because I had that strength and that coordination from lifting. Also, women are a lot more susceptible to osteoporosis than men. So even if your bones are fine now, after you hit menopause, oh my gosh, your bone health just goes downhill. So the way that you combat that is to fill up your bone bank right now. And what that means is that build your muscles, nope, build your bones nice and strong right now by lifting, jumping, resistance training. That helps them become more dense and less brittle so that when menopause hits and things do have to go up downhill, instead of starting from this low bone health point and going down, you start higher. So you're less likely to fracture things and get into like some dangerous territories from that. Muscle gives you curves. It can give your body that nice shape. If you have a pancake butt, then you can do hip thrusts, squats, deadlifts, and then build a juicy booty all naturally. If you want a tiny waist, there are two things you can do. One is to lose body fat because you become a smaller person overall and therefore your waist will become smaller. But if you naturally carry a lot of your body fat in your belly or your body size just tends to be like this, then that's when lifting can help. You can't make your waist smaller genetically. Like, I don't care how many waist trainers you use or for how long, even if you live in them, you can't make your waist smaller. But what you can do is, this is your body, you can make your shoulders, your lats, and your glutes bigger. So then they'll be a little bit wider and that comparison makes your waist look smaller. Do you see what I'm saying? So instead of everything being the same distance, then you got your shoulders, your, your lats, your waist coming in, and then your glutes coming out. So then you do get that curvy shape. 
Your training program should be personalized to you. I'm not telling you that you have to go for this hourglass shape and conform to society. If you like how your body looks like now and all the proportions, then you can train to enhance those. But if you want to get more closer to that hourglass shape, then if you're like bottom heavy, then you can focus on shoulders and lats. Or if you're top heavy, then you can work on your glutes and your legs. It's whatever you want it to be. <gasps> Let's talk about abs because a lot of people want them. So two things that you need for your six pack to actually show is to be lean enough and to have enough muscle. But some people, you can still have your six pack show even if you're not like super shredded. And that's because they have enough muscle built, which is another great thing about lifting. The more muscle that you have on you, the more defined they look. So then you don't have to diet as hard for them to show. A common question that I'll get is, will lifting make me look bulky? Will it make me look like a man? If I do a bicep curl, am I gonna look like the Hulk overnight? And the answer is no. Muscle actually takes a long time to build. I've been lifting for six years. And let me show you. I like to think that I'm here than the Hulk. This is six years of lifting. Do I look like a man? Let me know in the comments. There's no such thing as bulky muscle versus lean muscle. Muscle is the same tissue. So doing a bodyweight workout isn't going to keep you more toned than lifting heavy weights. What makes you look bulky is that you have muscle, but then you have fat layered over that, so it gives you that bulk. This misconception comes from just looking at powerlifters or bodybuilders. You look at professional powerlifters and see that they lift really heavy weight and they also look blocky. But then you also have bodybuilders who compete on stage and their muscles are huge. They literally look like the Hulk. But you're in a totally different boat from them. Powerlifters only care about strength. They don't really care about being the leanest or losing as much body fat as they can. So the fat on top of their muscle is gonna make them look bulky. But if you leaned out a powerlifter, they would look poop, poop, toned, that image that you're looking for. If you're afraid of looking like a jacked bodybuilder, don't worry, to get to that elite level status, they probably had to use steroids. So you, a female who is not using steroids, is on a totally different playing field from a man using steroids, or even women using steroids. So don't worry about looking that bulky or like the Hulk. It's not gonna happen. Lifting will be great for you. Great for your physique, your functionality, and for reaching your fat loss goals. Another wonderful thing about lifting is that you get to focus on something other than your body weight. Years and years and years ago, I picked up running as a tool to become skinnier. And it was cool because I did lose weight on it, but I was so obsessed with the number on the scale. If it ever went up, my self-esteem went down. Like, that number mattered so much to me, but that changed with lifting. When you're putting on muscle, the scale can go up, but you're looking better and you're like, oh snap, like, look at these gains I'm making. So it's no longer like scale goes up, self-esteem goes down. It's, hey, I'm intentionally working on putting on muscle, and now the scale is a reflection of that, and that's really cool. You're also getting stronger when you lift, so you gain this appreciation for what your body is capable of doing. Even if you have to start out on knee push-ups, when you're able to do your first real push-up, that's so exciting. When you're able to do a dip, super cool, a pull-up, amazing. So it's really fun to focus on gym performance as opposed to just the number on the scale. Lifting also helps you mentally. It can be therapeutic and help you de-stress, but it also empowers you because you literally become a strong, independent woman who don't need no man or woman. You could want them, but you don't need them because you can hold it down on your own so well. You gain this confidence when you see yourself getting stronger and stronger, and it makes life more fun. The world becomes your playground. Like when I bring my groceries in, I try to do it in one trip. That's the game that I get to play every single weekend. Or like all this furniture, these dresses, drawers, and mattress, I move them all by myself. The mattress is from upstairs, and I did that by myself, so that's cool. And replacing a car battery, I looked up how to do it, and it's like, caution, the battery's heavy. And I was like, Broop. I got it. They're like 40 to 60 pounds, so it was hefty, but I was still capable of doing it without injury. It's cool to be able to lift alongside guys to prove to yourself that you're just as capable. You never have to prove yourself to anyone else, just yourself. I don't care that the media says that women are weak, women are supposed to be pretty and skinny. None of that is true. You are so strong and you are so capable. 
It's okay if you need to look up a ton of YouTube videos to know how to do an exercise or what workout to do in the gym beforehand. It's always the scariest the first time, but it'll get easier every single time you go. I think a big part of gym intimidation stems from this fear that you're gonna look like a fool not knowing what you're doing. But everybody has to start from somewhere. Everybody else in that gym started right where you're starting, so it's okay that that is you. People are usually more preoccupied with how they look and what they're doing than they are of you. Unless you're about to endanger yourself or endanger other people, there's no real need for them to like come up and criticize you. And even if somebody came up and said something rude, that's a projection of their insecurities and not a reflection of your character. Because think of the type of person who would go out of their way to bring somebody else down. That is a small person, and so their words don't even matter. But overall, the lifting community is so fun and so supportive. I remember at my first powerlifting meet, my competitors were so friendly and they cheered me on. They were like, yeah, like PR, get that Viv. And I was, that got me hooked. That really got me hooked into the sport. And it's fun to be surrounded by other strong women and guys that you can lift with. It's a cool way to bond. My closest friends also lift because we spend so much time at the gym together. And you have this instant connection with anybody else in the world who lifts. Like my cousin's boyfriend, I've known him for a couple of years, but we've never really talked. But recently, when we found out that each of us lifts, we bonded over squat racks, and now we have a pretty good friendship. And one time at Costco, I saw this guy who had egg whites and spinach, and his quads were too tight for his pants. And I could tell. I was like, yeah, he's one of us. Or pre-COVID, whenever I saw other women who regularly lift around the same time that I did, it was so easy to walk up to them and make a new friend. I hope I've convinced you of the lovely world of lifting, and maybe you'll join too. If you have any questions or want to chat and hang out with me, I do weekly lives on Instagram, usually on Fridays. So if you want to join me there, follow me at V-I-V-Y-E-N-V-U. If you liked the video, press the like button. If you like the kind of videos I put out, press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I'm grateful for you, and I hope your life is filled with gratitude too.